Welcome to Newtown Creek Wastewater Resource Recovery Facility in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. My name is Alicia West and I'm DEP's Director of Public Design Outreach. I'm really excited to take you on a tour today of one of my favorite places in New York City. DEP is tasked with delivering fresh, clean drinking water to every New Yorker and providing 24-7 wastewater treatment. Now most people don't think much about what happens before they turn on their tap or flush their toilet, but there's a tremendous amount of infrastructure that goes into those seemingly simple tasks. The city's vast upstate reservoir system delivers over a billion gallons of drinking water every day through 7,000 miles of aqueducts, water tunnels, and water mains. And here in the five boroughs, we treat over a billion gallons of sewage every day at our 14 wastewater resource recovery plants. Newtown Creek is our largest wastewater resource recovery facility and our most architecturally striking. So today's tour is gonna to focus on the architectural master plan behind the complete upgrade of this facility, which began in the 1990s. Newtown Creek originally opened in 1967 to treat wastewater from Queens, Manhattan, and Brooklyn. By the 1990s, the facility needed to be upgraded to comply with the Clean Water Act and to incorporate new advances in wastewater treatment technology. The facility needed to grow from 32 acres to ultimately 53 acres. And what's more, DEP had to keep the entire plant running throughout the entire reconstruction process. To accomplish this incredible task, DEP hired a team of engineers, including Greeley and Hansen, Malcolm Pierney, and Hazen and Sawyer. And with the encouragement from the city's public design commission to bring a design architect on board, DEP hired Polshek Partnership to guide the site planning and the architectural character of the new facility. It's a little noisy out here on Greenpoint Avenue, so let's head on inside the Visitor Center to continue to talk. The architectural master plan that Polshek Partnership developed, what they called a kit of parts, established a consistent visual vocabulary for the entire facility. It also prioritized strategies to encourage public access and to help educate the public about wastewater treatment and resource recovery. This is a huge piece of infrastructure with a lot of moving parts, and the challenge was to knit it into the fabric of the city and instill a sense of civic pride. This is a really big campus. This is a scale model of it, and we're gonna take a walk around. But it's 53 acres, so I'll be the one who has sore feet, not you. Many of you have been on a tour of this facility in person before, and that concept of public access is baked right into the very early plans of this facility. So we're standing, again, in the visitor center, this space serves as an educational center and a display space for didactics and artifacts. Let's take a walk up the stairs. So as we walk up the stairs, you can see under the stair treads markings of the various elevations of that sea level and then our various upstate reservoirs. So this is New Croton Reservoir, 196 feet above sea level. Kenskill Reservoir, Ashoka, Skilharie, Cannonsville, the Pacton. And what that really illustrates, and I'm out of breath, is how our drinking water comes from very high up in the mountains and is delivered entirely by gravity to the city. In a typical year, our educational tour program reaches over 10,000 students and educators. We'll go back downstairs. So if we take a look down the stairs, you can see one of our two public art commissions at this facility. All right, so sneaking through the base of the visitor center, we have one of the facility's two public art commissions. This water feature is by Vito Acanchi Studio, and it's titled Waterfall Out and In. Now most people are surprised to learn that this is an Akanchi piece because he's famous for his socially transgressive video and performance artwork. But he also created architectural works such as this one. So on its surface, it's a celebration of water. Its shape emulates waterfalls and swirling eddies. But the way the fountain is both inside the building and outside the building, and the way it draws you in and kind of guides you on this serpentine path, that really speaks to Akanchi's artistic preoccupations about how bodies operate in constructed space and about blurring boundaries and the edges of spaces. Let's take one last peek at the front of the visitor center and then we'll take a walk through the campus. 
So the visitor center is located right at the entry of the campus, but you'll see from the bright colors and the eye-catching geometry of the building, it's a really warm and welcoming space. Okay, I want to take a pause here to get the lay of the land. All right, so looking south, we see the entrance of the facility, which is running as a, like a direct extension off of Humboldt Street. And above it, you see this great big elevated pipe. That pipe is bringing air from the main, the blowers in the main building to the aeration tanks. And we'll talk about those in a minute. So there's this great big piece of infrastructure and it's architecturally celebrated. It's raised up on these big yellow supports. And you'll see that as we walk along. So the main building behind me houses not only those blowers, but also our boilers, our generators, our control room, and the screenings room. The screenings room is the first stop for wastewater. It flows in and goes through these enormous screens. Those pull out anything that managed to find its way into the sewer system, like leaves, baby wipes, litter. Please keep in mind, just because you can flush something down your toilet does not mean you should flush it down the toilet. Just toilet paper, please. Anything else, especially wipes, wreaks havoc on the sewer and treatment system. Trash it, don't flush it. So the main building is a really good place to start talking about that architectural pit of parts. So you can see behind me, this wall is entirely is covered with a blue, dark blue glazed brick. And then we've got these strong horizontal louvers, stainless steel louvers, and that kind of contrasts with this big swooping stainless steel roof. We also have this green tile clad stair tower. That's something that you're gonna see throughout the facility. Now these colors were sort of selected with the idea that they represent earth, sky, and water. And they really give the entire campus a very unique feel. Come on, walk with me. So here we are on the west side of the plant. These are the aeration tanks and settling tanks. And this is where the wastewater is being treated. All right, so here, the heavier solids sink to the bottom and the lighter items float to the top and both are removed. Then we introduce air to the process and the air feeds these helpful bacteria that consume the dissolved organic waste that's in the wastewater. Once those bugs are sated, they also sink to the bottom and we scoop them out for further treatment. And again, this big pipe that runs along here, that's bringing the air from the main building um, into these aeration tanks, but the one that's running back closer to us is actually running to these vessels. These are our odor control vessels. You see we have many of them to control the odor at the plant. Between the batteries of the tanks, there are three similar structures. Two are control buildings for the tank, and the last is the disinfection facility. We'll see that in a little bit. These three structures are all clad in glazed white brick. They have clerestory windows that wrap all the way around underneath this swooping roof line. And that really echoes what we saw back at the main building with this sort of strict horizontality countered by this more curvilinear roof line. And here we are in front of the disinfection building. Back over that way you can see the north control building over the battery of tanks. Here at the disinfection building, this is the, one of the last steps for the wastewater. Here it's treated to make sure there are no harmful pathogens left in it before it's released clean into the East River. And behind me, you can even see in the distance, the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. Looking east, these are the famous digester eggs. This is where sludge, that solid material that we removed from the aeration and settling tanks, is brought for further treatment. Let's take a walk a little bit closer. Now, if you've been to Greenpoint or have driven from Brooklyn to Queens, you might be familiar with these enormous egg-shaped domes. Their scale makes them visible from all around, and Polshek capitalized on that to make them an iconic piece of the skyline. These are clad in stainless steel with a glass-enclosed catwalk, observation deck, and lit in an ethereal blue at night. Or for very special occasions, like a Valentine's Day tour, we light them up red. The eggs are a critical component of what we call the solids treatment process. The sludge is heated, 
mixed and digested by anaerobic bacteria for several weeks. The end products are biosolids, which can be beneficially reused as fertilizers, and biogas, primarily methane, which is reused here on site to run our boilers. And soon, through a partnership with National Grid, biogas will be put back into the grid to provide green energy for the surrounding community. And remember, this plant is huge, so sometimes our workers get around on bicycle. Now the shape. You might think that this is pure architectural flight of fancy, but the shape is actually directly tied to their function. That ovoid shape actually continues and is mirrored at the bottom. It actually extends a little bit underground. And that allows for the sludge inside to be continuously stirred. This is an example of Polshek's architectural approach. A marriage of formalism and aesthetics, but also with a commitment to creating architecture that serves the public. Now we're gonna go up to the top. So let's go find the elevator. You'll be able to find it by that telltale green tile. We're gonna take the elevator because it's 11 flights up. The glass enclosed catwalk was dreamed up precisely as a way to provide access to the public for tours of the facility but it also serves a helpful operational function for us because it eases maintenance. We don't have to climb 11 flights of stairs. So we can walk all the way around here and get a 360 degree view. And this view basically encompasses the area that this facility serves, about 25 square miles of Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens. And there's even an added treat. There's a little window over here that allows visitors to look down into the digesters and see this legend there. These digester eggs are really a monument to wastewater resource recovery, to every sewage worker who helps this great city of ours to run and to grow more sustainably each day. We're gonna head over to the support building next. Here we are at the support building, which houses our administrative spaces and our laboratories. Now, at first glance, this building might look a little different from the other structures that we've seen. It's faced in primarily curtain wall, However, if you take a little bit closer of a look, you'll see that same glazed tile, both the white and the dark blue, and the green tile-clad stair tower. And at the top, that canopy echoes the canopy we saw at the South Control Building. Now we're gonna go take a walk up to the roof. It's not a place that everybody gets to go see, so it'll be a nice treat. All right, welcome to the roof. I really love this view and I'm so happy we get to share this with you today because from up here, you can really get a sense of the layout of the entire campus and how that architectural kit of parts really provides a cohesive visual character for the entire campus. So looking down this way, you can see the rows and rows of aeration tanks sort of punctuated by these green clad stair towers and almost underscored by this giant aeration pipe that runs along the length of it. And you can see both control buildings, these two, and then over here we have our disinfection building. Behind me you can see the digester eggs where we just were, and behind that in the distance the new Kosciusko Bridge. So now we're looking east and you can see the entire Manhattan skyline. And now looking north, this is the Newtown Creek, the water body for which this facility is named. And that's our next and final stop. All right, we're standing now on the southern shore of the Newtown Creek, which is a tributary of the East River. And over here is the support building where we just were. And this waterfront esplanade is the second public art commission associated with the master plan. This is the Waterfront Nature Walk. And it was designed by artist George Trakas in association with Quinnell Rothschild and Partners, Landscape Architects, and the fruit of tireless efforts of community advocates. Let's take a walk. So not only is this an important respite, um, but also provides an incredible open space uh, for the community. Um, it also digs deeply into the history of Greenpoint and the creek and its importance throughout human history. So these stone seating elements 
are carved with Lenape names for places in the area. This one means great brook with, with tide, referring to the creek. And coming over here. These steps down into the creek have these handrails, which are shaped to be a water molecule. And even the trash cans, no small details here, right? Even the trash cans are designed to be, to look like barrels, which refers to the barrel making or cooperage industry that was so great over here along this creek so long ago. <laughs> this big granite bollard is carved with the original tributaries of the Newtown Creek. And we're right here. <laughs> So this is actually carved on a slight incline. So when it rains, all of these engravings of the tributaries slowly fill up with rainwater. So it's winter now, but in the springtime, all of these beautiful native plants come to life and it's a beautifully lush landscape. So what I love about the nature walk is that it highlights and amplifies the history of this waterway. Newtown Creek is embraced here in all of its forms, as a natural resource and as an industrial waterway. Here you can see one of our largest sludge boats, and this takes our digested sludge, the biosolids, away to another plant for further treatment. And across the way, there's metal salvaging yards. And among all of this, there's this tremendous landscape that has so many details to enjoy. So the first phase of this project was completed in 2007, and we've been hard at work to expand the nature walk over this inlet here, Whale Creek, to connect it back to Kingsland Avenue on the other side. This expansion is 20 years in the making, and we can't wait to share it with you. We're going to have more programming, hopefully in the spring, with artist George Trakas. So thank you so much for joining me here today. We are tremendously proud of all of the work that went into the planning and construction of this facility over a 25 year period and of all of the really critical work that goes on here each and every day. We hope we can welcome you back soon for a tour in person. Thanks. <laughs>